Hi, I'm Carrie, and we're going to talk about stuffing filling pin cushions. I'm going to tell you both words, part because I'm going to explain a little bit more about that in a minute. What I'm going to show you here is some of the tools I use, some of the options, and how I actually stuff fill the pin cushions. Let me talk about that really quickly at the beginning. I distinguish between filling and stuffing. Filling is the stuff that gives it weight. That is crushed walnut shells, aquarium sand, it can also be emery. It's the stuff that's going to give it some weight and some kind of keep it firm. Stuffing is everything from cotton stuffing like this. I prefer cotton over the polyester. The Sweet Dreams is my favorite kind. Uh, it's one of the few. It's kind of actually in sheets, but I just pull it off. And the idea is to keep using tiny pieces. It's tempting to put this in. This is going to give you lumps, lots of little itty bitty pieces. That's what's going to help fill it out and not get too lumpy. This is stuffing. You can also use, if you don't have that, uh, take a piece of leftover batting and just cut it up with a rotary cutter, a piece, a pair of scissors. This was cut just a few minutes ago with pinking shears. This works really nicely for the same reason, small little pieces. And if you make quilts, you have leftover batting, small pieces. Especially after you've trimmed up a quilt, save some of those small pieces or just keep pulling it out where it's been stitched. Put it in a jar, put it in a bag. There's some stuffing. I also recommend cutting up some of your little pieces of batting that you can use as one of the last things you're putting in for after you've filled it. This will help prevent, as you're stitching it closed, getting crushed walnut shells everywhere. Another option, there's not a one of you who doesn't have these little things that you cut off from trimming. This also makes really nice stuffing. Small pieces, if you've got some that get a little bigger, you can just cut them up. But small pieces are really good for that. Another chip that you're going to need, you're gonna need a tray of some kind with lip around it so that it's not rolling off the edges. Go ahead and from your kitchen, you can use a jelly roll pan, any kind of baking sheet with little lip rib, a line on the side. What are these things called? An edge. There you go. You need something like that so that it can catch any spillage because there will be some. It lets you just tilt it, pour it back in the jar. You're also going to need a funnel. Uh, it doesn't matter. It can be big, it can be small, whatever's handiest and easiest for you to actually handle. And you'll need a scoop of some kind to be able to scoop out from the jar. <clears throat> When it comes to jars, uh, plastic is better than glass because if it gets dropped, it won't break, but you absolutely need something with a lid that stays on because if it gets knocked over, you have kids, you don't want that to be having to vacuum all the time. Ask me how I know that. All right, we're going to go ahead and I'm gonna stuff this, fill it. I want you to go ahead when you're all finished, both sides are quilted. Uh, if you have quilted this and you have a layer of batting between that and your fabric, you do not need a liner for this, or at least I've never found that you needed one. You are going to want to go across the corners just at an angle. It, I do show it in the book because you're going to need to trim those to get some of the bulk out. Straight across and then if you want to angle the corners a little bit, you can. All right, start the size of the hole. The bigger it is, the easier it is to turn. The smaller it is, the easier it is to fill because you have less space that's open. I find about an inch, inch and a quarter works really nicely depending on the size of it. I reach down in to get one corner started and then I use a turning tool. I love chopsticks. And then it's simply a case of starting to get it through. And if you've ever turned anything, you know that it is a back and forth, push-pull kind of process. You get it turned in right side out. And then you can use the turning tool 
I'm going to have to put my glasses on here for this. You use the turning tool to gently push out the corners. I say gently because I have poked holes in the corners. Uh, sometimes it's possible to just go back, restitch, or you can just darn it as I've done on one. It's actually in the book because it happens. If you have a point turner from garment sewing, that works very nicely as well. I also will run this along the seam just to kind of push it out a little bit. You can press it if you want. Not super necessary, except sometimes it is handy to press that so that you know it's straight because after you start filling it, and then you're starting to stitch it closed, you can kind of lose where that fold is. All right, I'm gonna go ahead. That inch, inch and a quarter also fits my funnel nicely. All right. Most of these will take about a cup, cup and a half. I go ahead and do the first one and then you're gonna just shake it to get it down. After that first scoop, and mine is a half cup scoop, then I fill it a little bit more slowly because I'll get to a point where I can't add any more. And you can use the top of the funnel to push it down a little bit. Now it gets creative. See, and I'm already spilling little bits. I go ahead and I use my finger in there to kind of hold it, and now you're gonna shake it. And once it compacts down a little bit, now I can hold it and shake it again. And by the way, wear your Fitbit when you're doing this, you'll get so many steps. Okay, I don't worry about the shape at this point because you're going to be able to move it around and kind of repack it a little bit. Now I can add more walnut shells. And because I'm getting near the top, it's going to get harder and I start pushing them into the corner. And you should also know I like these where they're fairly firm. So some people might think I overstuff it, but that's how I like it because it is also going to relax down a little bit, especially if somebody plays with them on a video. Okay. And this is where now I can't really do any more. So I've got it pretty tight. And as you can see, as I'm adjusting, I'm spilling some, hence the tray. Now is when you can start using little pieces to stuff in and keep it tighter. Whoops. Also adding this at this point, it means you're not gonna have as much to spill if this gets knocked over. If you want something to help it stand or you're filling multiple <laughs> pin cushions at a time, you know those kind of wavy taco shell holder things that you can get? Um, that works nicely. All right, fill this in a little more. I'm not gonna actually stitch this closed because I stitch this kind of thing very slowly. I will start stitching it closed at this point and then probably right before I am, when I have maybe a half an inch, I will probably get in a couple more little pieces under my stitching to keep it tight. You can also use like a little square to put in that's going to, especially if you've got just shells or you don't want to stuff it quite as tight. Let me get that last little bit in. And okay, this is ready. This is ready for stitching closed. Stitching it closed. You can use a 50 weight thread. You can use basically any stitching thread that you would use. I will sometimes use a coated quilting thread just because it's strong. Depending on the thread I use, I will use a double thread or a single. 
I use what's kind of like a tack stitch. I would love to say that these all come out perfectly and you can't tell which side I filled. Uh, that's not the truth. There are some that come out really, really, really well and aren't I great? And there are some that honestly, it looks like I tried to staple it with a stapler. It just is not as neat, but it's a pin cushion and I don't worry about it. If you do embroidery, go ahead and do a couple of little cross stitches over your stitching. Take a little piece of selvage, put that over. There's some fun little patch things you can do to cover that if it bothers you. Just as a little embellishment, you can say, oh no, I intended to do that. The stitching underneath is perfect. Um, I stitch it back and I back up and back. I do it two passes. The first time is to really just get it closed. The second time is because I don't want it to open and I don't always trust that I caught the stitches. And to me, closed is more important than it looking like some very professional stitching. Uh, that's it. And then I just, I'll knot it, probably bury it through a seam. And there you go. And then you can start kind of reshaping it a little bit to kind of flatten it out. And I'm going to grab one of these to show you what I mean. This is one where once you kind of hit it once or twice and you put it down, it's going to flatten out. Uh, for pin cushions like this one, you're going to want to use your point turner or chopstick and really get some of the stuffing, this, up in the top point up here. These two, a little bit, it matters this one, but this one, because it's up at the top, your filling's gonna wanna droop. So if you want this to really kinda be sharp, you've gotta get some stuffing up there. The same thing goes for the rounds. These are hard to keep them really, really round. That's why you always see that they've got that kind of cording. So for on the sides, once it's filled with some crushed walnut shells, this probably has almost as much stuffing in it as it does walnut shells because that's what helps keep the outer edge a little bit smoother. Um, so that's it for filling and stuffing. Thank mm -hmm. you.